Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. <laughs> of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Beast, I'm YouTube famous now, available in 2018, the album. <laughs> Dad, AF, silverfox.com, silverdaddy.com. The oldies edition. Bring over some of your old Motown records. Put the speakers in the windows and we'll go. Y'all love Rod Stewart. Okay, so true story. I was up at the casino the other night playing with all my gals. Hey, Valerie, how are you? We were playing Lightning Strike. I love that game. I never win. She always does. She always hits the thousands and the major. It doesn't matter. But anyway, she always hits the major and the minor and all kinds of stuff. But we were sitting in there and they were playing all this music. I was like, I don't know any of these songs. And then they played that song. That your old Motown records. I was like, I love this song so much. So I got in my car and I downloaded it off of iTunes. True story, I did. Hashtag true story. But anyway, and then like I was looking at my iTunes library and I was like, I have so many Rod Stewart songs. I had forgotten about Rod Stewart. My mom loved him back in the day. Do you think I'm sexy? But no, like really, do you? Shane, do you think I'm sexy? I think you're sexy, Shane. So anyway, let's get right into this video. This is my reaction to the third installment of the Jeffree Star Shane Dawson docuseries of the world. The P United States of YouTube demands a fair and unbiased reaction video to Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. Okay, so let me just tell you, um, I didn't really know what to expect going into part three, and, uh, uh, before we get into this, I just want to tell you what uh, Jeffree Star has tweeted out in the, let's say, the last uh, hour, 37 minutes. Uh, 37 minutes ago, he tweeted out, Sometimes I feel so lonely, it's hard to breathe. We have all our own insecurities and personal, personal issues, but I'm still learning how to not keep everything inside. Every day I'm working on a better me. And then he tweeted out, The only way to find true happiness is to risk being completely cut open. Okay, so yesterday in my video, and the day before really, Come here. It's Pee Pee the Flying Chihuahua. How are you doing today, Pee Pee? He said, um, can we get some more of those lip scrubs? They taste so good. So anyway, he doesn't eat the lip scrubs. He doesn't really. I mean, maybe sometimes, but he has to have fresh lips. Pee Pee's really weird about his lips, okay? So anyway, oh, by the way, I literally just got off the computer and uh, I ordered the Anastasia of Beverly Hills Norvina palette. So it's gonna be here in two to three days. And when it comes, I'm gonna be doing my review. Y'all know I do a review of all the palettes. And then I'm going to give a, do a giveaway on here. So you're going to want to follow me here and on my Instagram because I'm going to do it on one of those two places. So anyway, that's coming. I can't wait. So many people have done reviews about it. It's Jeffree Star approved. Anyway, so um, I didn't really know what to expect going into this video part, you know, uh, what is it? Part three of this. I thought it would either be super serious or super funny, right? Can I just say one thing about <laughs> Andrew, the, the film guy, the videographer, the dude with the camera? Um, how can somebody be so effing cute when you don't even see him, right? Like, he is so cute just by, like, the little statements that you... It totally reminds me... Did you guys ever watch uh, My So-Called Life back in the day with Jordan Catalan Catalano? It was with Claire Danes. There was really no ja Jordan Catalino or Catalano, whatever his name was. He, that was really played by that guy that's in the band now, and he's gotten super weird. You know what I'm talking about? He was also in Dallas Buyers Club. Why can't I think of his name? But anyway, r real, real sexy. So, um, what is his name? I can't think of it. Somebody help me in the comment section below. I know, like, uh, so it starts with a J. Jared Leto, yes! Anyway... But do you remember in My So-Called Life when they'd always be like, that Rayanne girl, she'd always, was a Rayanne McGrath? Yeah. She was always like, where's Tito? Where's Tito? Everybody was looking for Tito and you never knew where Tito was. You never saw him, I, not once in the show. I think you saw him come, it doesn't matter, but I think you saw him coming out of a party one time, that was it. Well, Andrew's kind of like Tito. You never see him, but he's super cute, isn't he? I mean, if you go over to his Instagram, he's super cute too. All these people, but anyway, they don't hold a candle to my husband, I'll tell you that, okay? Latino lover of the world. But, I didn't know what to expect. Go, I'm crazy. I like, I have like literally lost my shit, okay? I did not know what to expect going into this video. And um, <laughs> I may have heard, <laughs> a little birdie may have told me that two people watch my videos at, at the end of their day. And so I'm a little nervous about making this video. But anyway, no, I'm not. Uh, people are people. And so anyway, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it would either be very, very serious or very, very funny. The way that Shane is weaving all of this together, I don't know. It's like, okay, whatever happened to Garrett and Shane and their production company? Does anybody remember that? 
and they were gonna do all these kind of experimental films and do is that still happening like I don't feel like I've heard a whole lot about that but if it's not happening I don't know why um Shane like on a genius level and I just want to say this so I don't have to get a hundred comments below well you said these things about Tana that TanaCon mess, like I said, if I had watched the other video first, I would have said, if I had watched her video first, I would have said much different things about it. I think he was in way over his head, and I, you know, I think he did the best with what he could. That, that's what I have to say about that now. The way that he geniusly, like, it's not even editing, you guys. It is like how he just weaves this shit together and brings out the emotion and weaves the emotion into the humor. And I'll tell you something like, okay. When I started watching Shane Dawson, it was back in the day when he was kind of doing some cutting-edge, inappropriate humor, right? And, uh, I mean, this is the thing, is that YouTube has changed so much, okay, in the last... I mean, I've watched it for 10 years with the Chris Crockers and shit. And the things that Chris Crocker and then Shane and other people were doing humor-wise on YouTube 10 years ago, Johnny Boy Exo, who I absolutely adore. She's been threatening that she's coming back. I don't know where she's at. Johnny boy, come on back. That's not her name anymore. I think her name is now Johanna. But anyway, I loved, these people I like adored, right? Because they got on camera and they didn't give a fuck what they said. But now we're just a bunch of social justice warriors and everybody gets upset about everything. There was something in this video right away. I mean, right out of the gate, somebody, that Jeffrey said or somebody said, and I thought, oh, they're going to come for it. I'm there, this is going to be the issue right here. And I mean, as a drama channel of the world, I can watch a video and spot it a mile away what somebody's going to say about something. I, you, you just, you get so used to it. And it's like, you can't just have fun and humor anymore because it's, everything is so deep, right? Like we just like blow it out. And the thing is, is that what it's done is it has really skewed the line of what is really serious and what is maybe inappropriate to be apologized about and learn from, but not to disown somebody. You know what I mean? But anyway, so that's how I started watching Shane back in the day. And just absolutely one of the most hilarious people I'd ever seen. Well, no offense to Shane, I have to say in the last year, I haven't witnessed that kind of humor. He's done some very kind of like serious, you know, videos and all this kind of stuff. The humor in this video, literally, I, mean, I was laughing. I, I laughed more in part three than I have in the other two parts. I was laughing, when he was like getting ready, and I mean, just, okay, the part where he was imitating Jeffree Star reminded me so much of Parker Posey in Scream 4 when she was imitating, uh, what's her face, you know, the news reporter. Anyway, I like, it just reminded me so much of that scene when she's like, did you guys know what I'm talking about in Scream 4? It just was like perfection. Like Shane knows his humor so well and he knows how to play it out. And when he's in his like natural element, just allowing himself to be funny, it's not forced, he's not trying to do it in a video. And like, this was just so natural to me. And it just, I literally, I was like laughing so much. Then he gets to the warehouse, <laughs> okay. The, some of it was just like, I don't know, the car stuff and all that kind of stuff. But when he, uh, they get to the warehouse, one of the things, like my first response, okay, I really had to kind of like watch this part like three times. He gets to the warehouse and Shane's like so completely overwhelmed, so completely overwhelmed. And one of the criticisms I've heard about, I mean, really there are no criticisms, but honestly, like one of the things I've gotten some comments about are that people are really surprised that Shane Dawson was that surprised by Jeffree Star's house when he's been there before and he's driven up the street. And so they're like, what was all that about? That was kind of how I felt when he walked into the warehouse, okay? But then I stopped for a second and it was like right when he was looking at the socks and um, it was that moment and I rewound it back to when he like went to um, rewind. Please rewind your VCR tapes before you return to Blockbuster. If you're as old as me, you know what I'm talking about. I miss the Blockbuster so much. When me and my good Jitty Tanya, we just walk up and down the aisles and pick what movie we're going to watch for the night. Now it's that stupid red box and they don't have anything out. And everybody's got, you know, what's it called? The stick where you just get everything for free anyway. So why would you even go to the red box? This is a bunch of junk. So anyway, and you're not supposed to tell people you have that stick, but we all do, okay? We all have the one cousin that illegally does that shit. I ain't telling you who mine is, and don't call me, because I'm not going to have a program it for you. You can pay your $30 to have somebody do it for you, too. So anyway, um, I was kind of like, really, like, <laughs> maybe it's because Shane doesn't do beauty drama, but like, I was not super surprised by the size of this warehouse. Okay, until this, and then I was thinking about like the palette and I started reviewing the palettes. And the one thing about when you review a palette, I've seen so many palette reviews. I mean, hundreds of them at this point, right? 
When you see them on video and when you see them in person, they're completely two different things, right? Well, isn't that everything in life? Like when we see it in person, when we see it another way, it's completely different. I have toured a few warehouses. I've actually, um, I toured one time, this is the one I was thinking about, a cell phone distribution warehouse that was massive, okay? It was literally, I, I'm, no, no lie, it was probably a cell phone distribution warehouse. Huge, okay? Probably twice the size of this warehouse. So then you think, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about this, right? Wow, it is pretty massive. Like, this is huge. And then when he went and he showed the where, you know, all of the offices and stuff, I just was kind of at that point, like, then I was kind of like in Shane Dawson's shoes. I mean, I wish. But, I, you know, for a moment I was like, this is like, like, this is huge. And then when he asked him how many employees he has, and he said like 105 or something, I used to work for a treatment facility that no lie had a, hundred, a treatment facility. All like adolescent, adult, outpatient, inpatient, detox, supportive living program, every program that you can imagine. 120 employees, right? And I'm sitting there thinking about how I worked for this organization that I thought was rather large, and Jeffree Star is basically running an organization exactly that size. And I was like, this is a big deal, okay? This, this surpasses YouTube. This surpasses all of that. And the thing that was so surprising to me about this video, right, was that it was really, really inspiring and motivating about Jeffree Star, honestly. And it really, it, what it showed was, I loved when he was talking about the fact when he was asking about the money and all that kind of stuff and how much he makes, and he said, are you talking hundreds of millions of dollars? Well, all right, Kylie Jenner. When he was talking about high, like hundreds of millions of dollars, I'm not, to be honest with you, really surprised by that. The cosmetics industry is huge, right? And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm watching all this, but he talks about in 2014, four years ago, you guys, four years ago, he had $3,000 in the bank and he took a risk and put everything he had into that. Now, I'm not telling people to do that, okay? But I am a believer that we have to take risks in life and we have to chase our dreams. Life is really, really short. And there was something that, for me, personally, as somebody that is always looking to be motivated and to be inspired, not that I'm not intrigued by Jeffree Star's life, not that I'm not interested in the cars and the house and the trips, because I am, the clothes and all that kind of stuff on a superficial level. I think it's very cool. I want to see it. I wanna, I'm interested in it. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> the $36,000 purse. I'd have laid her down and been like, uh, no thanks. <laughs> I'll just take a trash bag with me for the day. But anyway, um, you know, all of that is very intriguing to me and very interesting to me. But to be motivated by someone to, to see that four years ago they had $3,000 in a bank and today they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, that isn't even about the money to me, okay? That is about drive. That is about, you know, saying I'm not going to be taken down. Like, I, I know that I can do this. That's about confidence. And, um, you know, I will say this, in this, the few conversations I've had with Jeffrey, that's what I've always gotten is a reminder of confidence. And, you know, and, and not in an ugly way, not in a shitty way. And I kind of did love that Shane, like, wove through all the Snapchats at the beginning to show, like, when he does kind of go off and stuff, because I do think that that's going to be addressed. And it was, I mean, we're starting to get into that stuff a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, he addresses all that with the going off and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, like, all the past issues aside, no, I ain't giving her a free pass, okay? What I'm saying is all the issues aside, wow. Like, wow. Like, that's just, that's where I'm, like, with the Shane Dawson thing, looking at it like, how the hell did you get here in four years? Like, seriously? And when he's like, you know, you didn't, how did it happen and all this, I just was like, I don't know, I was just kind of blown away in that moment. So I was in a parking lot sitting there watching this on my phone as soon as it came out. And when Jeffree Star got in talking about his family, <laughs> this, okay, Shane Dawson made Jeffree Star cry. Maybe just one tear when he went, did you see that? But he made him cry. He made Jeffree Star cry from the ashes, Jeffree Star. I'm sitting there watching it. And um, I almost thought about doing like a live reaction to just that part on video. Not that I have a problem crying. If you watch my videos, y'all know I cry all the time. But I got so emotional listening to Jeffrey talk about that. You know, I don't know that I relate on any level to having family take advantage of me. But I can imagine what that's like. And I'm going to get to that part in a second. But when he was talking about coming from a very small family, you know, I haven't, 
I haven't ever disguised the fact that I'm an only child from parents that were divorced. My mom passed away in 08, and it's literally, at, my aunt and uncle passed away. It is just my cousin and I at this point. And, you know, my dad is still alive, my stepmom, but outside of my immediate family, it's just my cousin and I. That's it. If it were not for my husband and his humongous Venezuelan family, I wouldn't have a family. And so, to me, there's always been this discussion of family of origin versus family of choice. And my family of choice today is my husband and my dogs and our close friends. You know, I love my dad, I love my stepmom, I love my cousin. But it's my chosen family. And when he discussed that in there, I was like, you don't really understand the gravity of what you're saying out there. To the 16 year old, to the 18 year old, to the 25, to the 50 year old, that has nobody, okay? What you're saying is you can create your own family. It was such a poignant and profound moment. It was really important. And, um, you know, it was something that will stay with me. It was really an emotional moment to see Jeffrey break it down and just allow himself to be vulnerable. And you could just tell on his face. I'm not a believer that somebody has to cry to show emotion. You can see a shift in his face, and it was just stripped away for a moment. He was like, this is who I am. You know, like, see, I'm getting emotional even thinking about it. And I think when Shane said, I relate to it so much, for us to finally see a side of Jeffree Star that's relatable, I mean, that in itself is kind of a moment, you know? And like I've always said in all of my videos, it'll, it's, it'll be interesting to see what he does going forward after the series is done, you know? And, um... But I think now that he has like unveiled himself to the world, I think we will see more of that. When he was in there and he was talking about the money piece and he was talking about how family and friends have taken advantage of him and that that's really, really hurtful. And then they were going in and he was talking about how much money he makes and all this kind of stuff. And he was talking about the problems that rich people have. One of the things, and I don't know how many people know this or if you're new to this channel or whatever, but if you're not, then you'll know. Um, I worked for almost 20 years in the field of addiction. And, um, you know, disease of addiction <laughs> has no boundaries. Like, it doesn't know the difference between rich and poor. And I have seen just as many overdose and deaths of people that are mass wealth just as much as people that have no money whatsoever. And when he was talking about the problems that are associated with money, you know, I think when we strip away the Gucci and we strip away all of that and the private planes and the house, it's like... You know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's like the problems that we have with maybe paying the light bill and whatever are a lot different to the problems that Jeffree Star has. But like Atticus Finch says in To Kill a Mockingbird, <laughs> I'm using that because that's m my favorite book and movie. Okay. You know, you don't really know somebody until you walk around in their shoes. And I think that's true, not just of the Jeffree Stars or the Shane Dawson's, but any of these people. Like, do we really know what it's like to walk around in their shoes? It's pretty easy to pass judgment on somebody, you know? And I think in just seeing that scene, like, I had this moment as a drama channel, honestly, where I was like, Shoo. like, it shifted my perspective. And I was like, like, really, it was a moment for me a teachable, remaining teachable moment where I looked at it and I was like, have I been fair in looking at all of these people and where they're coming from and what, what they're doing and what they're learning? And I'm not going to stop being that drama child. Listen, I didn't earn my seat, okay? I used to be a candle review company and then I was Andy Cohen, sometimes the Anderson Cooper, forever the Janice Joplin, sometimes the Lita Ford, but I am basically a drama channel of the world East Coast executive, said James Charles. So I ain't giving up that seat, okay? I'm going to continue to do the drama. But, you know, I've tried a lot in the last year to do drama in a different way, to give the facts and then give my perspective of what I think that moment responding to it. And I think having seen that moment and hearing somebody say, you don't really know what my life is like until you live it, right? Well, we don't really know what your life is until you show it. That's the other part of it. And now that you're showing it, maybe people will respond to you in a different way. I think. Okay, this was what was so crazy, was when he said that he didn't think anybody would be interested in the warehouse and all that kind of stuff. That's more interesting to me, honestly, this is just me, than half of the videos that are put out there, okay? I don't need to see any more of these makeup tutorial people, not just Jeffree Star, but all of them, okay? Recreate the same videos 10 times over, okay? I don't give a shit what kind of makeup they sell up, and he's never done this video, I don't think. But I don't give a shit what kind of makeup they sell up in the Dollar General. I don't need to see a whole full face of it no more. I don't care. I just don't, okay? Show us your life. Show us who you are. Do a get ready. I just talked about this the other day, and then Manny went on a date uh, with somebody. And, uh, you know, who? We don't know. <laughs> Wait till that one comes out. It'll be a drama video of the world. 
But he didn't get ready with me while I was getting ready on his date. That's the kind of shit people want to see. We want to see into your lives. We want to see who you are. Hell yes. I would love to see Jeffree Star do a walk around his warehouse. And thank God he's finally did it with the Shane Dawson thing. Because what it feels like is we're peeling away layers of the onion. It feels like we're getting to really know this person and who they are. And the thing is... You know, I have said for quite some time that I believe that we are becoming a different world. We are becoming a different society. For us to buy into somebody, for us to buy into somebody's products and who they are and what they are, we want to know who they are as a person. We want to know where their stance is on certain issues. And we've seen this a lot. I mean, that's alone why a lot of drama channels exist. It is also why I do believe that Shane Dawson will delve into the issues of the past, maybe some of the friendships and the racism and things like that, and hear it from him in a discussion, you know, not just sitting on a video. Because I think people really want to know if you are asking me to invest in Jeffree Star going forward, and he is breaking down the veil of who he is, then let's really get to the bottom of it so we can move forward, you know? Now, there are a lot of people that won't, and that's their prerogative, and I'm not telling anybody what to do, you know? I can't imagine what it's like to feel from somebody else's perspective. So I will never put that in somebody's, you know, the mouth of what to do or what to say. But it will be interesting to see what happens in four and five and it's the finale and I think it'll get all broken down. The one thing was at the very end when they showed a lot of stuff between Jeffree Star and Garrett and all that kind of stuff and this is my only thing, okay? I hope it's not a 20 minute, I hope 20 minutes of it aren't about Jeffree Star and Garrett. I love Garrett, I love his videos. You know, I'm a fan of his, I really am. I think he's cute. I'm just not like, that's not what I came here for this video for, if that makes sense. Like, I want to see Jeffrey. I want to hear about the life of Jeffrey Star. I want him and Shane to have a dialogue and discussion. But if it's woven in there interestingly about it, well, I mean, I'm all right all about that. So we'll have to see, you know, what, what, goes, what happens going forward. I will be reacting to all of these videos. You know I have. I've done three already. Okay? I mean, yeah, yes. Y'all know. I'm going to keep on talking about it. But I think at the end of it, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to collectively sit down, honestly, and because I had talked about this on the other day that on the Reddit, people were saying that I've given Jeffree Star a free pass. And so I kind of have thought a lot and looked at a lot of my past videos and thought about how I wanted to do a video talking about, do I give Jeffree Star a free pass? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what I've said in the past, compare it to what I saw overall in the series, and then make my response to that video at that time. Because... I do think I want to take an overall look at who he is as a person. And um, like I said, it's a discussion that we all have a stance on and everybody has a right to their own opinion and those kinds of things. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you don't have a right to your opinion. We all have a right to our opinion. And, um, you know, I think that if anything came out of this video for me, I loved how emotional it got. I, I, I just, it was so unexpected to me and I thought it was so beautifully done. It was so natural. I just loved every, it was just such a raw, authentic moment of Jeffree Star, and really Shane Dawson too in that moment, like, you could just really tell it was like this breakdown moment, it was just absolutely beautiful for me, that, that moment alone, sitting there in the office was just, it was fantastic, and just the framing of it, going up, talking about the money, and then breaking it all down, and all that kind of stuff, I want to see more of that, that is what I loved, and, you know, in a way, did you guys get the feeling that Shane was saying to him indirectly, because he hasn't given him any advice, none whatsoever. These are the kind of videos you need to make in the future. Did you kind of get that? Because I did, and that's what I hope we see going forward in the future with, you know, Jeffrey's videos that we get. Not all of them, and we all want to see the tutorials and all that kind of stuff. But I would like to see some more behind the scenes kind of this is who I am. Let me tell you some stories of my life. Because I do think that people would be intrigued by that and want to hear what he has to say. I thought it was incredibly inspiring and motivating, at least for this one sitting right here. And I always, in any situation that I go into or any video that I watch or any book that I read or movie that I see, I try to go into it with taking a learning experience away for it, you know, from it. You know, I can always criticize something. I can always look at the negative in it. And I often do. I'm pretty honest about my opinions. But I also try to go into it and say, what have I learned from this situation? And for me, I think what I've learned so far is that don't ever let somebody keep you down and that you can rise above everything and you can make your dreams come true. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.